Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm one of the CAM application specialists here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to program to machine a O-ring groove or a gasket groove. So by O-ring groove or gasket groove, I'm referring to a narrow channel pocket. What we'll see is how to set up the parameters that allow us to enter and exit the pocket without gouging the walls. So let's get into an example here. I have the head of a filter assembly. And if I flip this around, we can see that there is an O-ring groove on the bottom for a number 47 O-ring. So it's a very narrow channel. Let's see how we program that inside CamWorks. So I'll go to my CamWorks feature tree. I've already defined it as a circular pocket with an island. I'm using my rough, rough rest and finish strategy for my default tech DB. I'll just do a generate operation plan. And you can see that automatically it adds a rough mill and a contour mill. In the rough mill, it's trying to use a three quarter inch flat end mill. It's basing the tool selection off of the large diameter of the circular pocket. Of course, that's not going to fit. I'm going to switch this to my 1 16th flat end mill. And since we're roughing a very narrow channel, I'm not going to try and use any of these items here from the default. And I'm going to take off the side allowance because there's no room for any side allowance. So I'll just take that right down to zero, and we can see that we roughed out that channel. Now, to bring that to size, we're going to use the contour mill operation. So in the contour mill operation, again, the tool selection is based off of the radius. I'm just going to go in there and again, choose that 1 16th tool. And then I'll do a preview just to show the challenge here. So the lead in lead out will gouge the walls no matter how we set it up. So if I go to my lead in here, let me just apply it to all we have a gouge check turned on, and that's why it's giving me that message. But if I take off the gouge check and put this on possibly, let's say, a perpendicular lead in, and I'll set that lead in to 50 thou. And if we zoom in there, it definitely will gouge on the way in and the way out. So how do we address that with the contour mill? Well, there's two changes I want to make here. One is for the lead in, I need that lead in. I need that linear move to, to uh, establish my cutter compensation. So I'm going to get it to happen above the part. I'm actually going to go to the advanced tab and start the operation a certain amount of distance above the top of the feature. So in this case, I'll set it to 50 thou. So we're going to start 50 thou above the part. Also, as a very narrow groove, I'll do a lead in to get my cutter comp, but I don't actually need to lead off the wall. So I'm just going to set this to none. If I do a preview on that, what we see is we have the lead in happening above the part. Now, what I want to do also is I'm going to go to the contour tab and I'm going to set it up so that it actually uh, very gradually enters into that pocket. This is a narrow groove. It's almost like we're doing um, a plunging as we enter in. So I actually want to do almost like a helical entry. So I'm going to go to my ramp menu, set it to cut amount. And knowing how I set this up, I'll put an input value of 60 thou. So I've already started 50 thou above the part. By this point, I've already done my lead in. I can just gradually enter into the pocket in the same trajectory as the shape of that pocket. So with 60 thou, I'll actually do a little bit of a helical entry for that last 10 thou of that entry. And then every subsequent move can be whatever I set as my max cut. If I do a preview on that, what we get is my lead in. It does the helical entry smoothly entering into the pocket, retracts out, repositions to the next pass, and then it also will do a lead in as it goes into that pocket. If we take a look at that in terms of a step through, there's my lead in move, and it does an arc smoothly entering into the pocket, following the trajectory of the pocket. And then from there, it'll just go and do the laps around the part, finishing the part. Track reposition, and then does a lead in, and then it does a hill call entry going the other direction. All together, if I do a simulation of that, we machine the part with no gouges. Machine to size. If I've liked what I've done there, I can go back to my feature tree, right click on the feature, save operation plan, and I can save all those parameters to a specific operational strategy for things like O-ring grooves and gasket grooves. I've done that previously. I called it my O-ring groove strategy. So if I were starting fresh on this part, I would establish the feature I would choose the operational strategy set for the O-ring groove, generate operation plan, generate toolpath, and I have 
an operation that does that heel go entry starting above the part with a leading lead out that allows me to establish my cutter comp. So now that I have an operational strategy, I can apply that to other features of the same type. Let's take a look at an example of that application. So what I have on screen here is another housing, this time from a pump assembly, and I have a gasket groove there. I've defined it as an old brown pocket, and I've saved similar parameters to the strategies inside of this one. I called it a gasket groove. Generate operation plan. In this case, because of the narrowness of that pocket, I would choose a proper tool for that size. In this case, I've already just preloaded it to a quarter inch tool. I'll do a generate tool path, and what we get is our roughing of that narrow pocket and a finishing with that helical entry, starting above the part doing a lead in, lead out into that gasket groove. If I simulate that, we can see no gouges on that as well. So anytime you're doing something specific or in a general sense to a type of feature, you can always save it back to the TechDB. Here, because of the narrowness of that pocket, I made sure to do a lead in, lead out above the part and then use the cut amount ramping to gradually enter into that narrow channel. Now, what I've shown in this video might not apply to everyone's machines. There might be some limitations with cutter compensation in your controller, with your post, with your machine. You might have certain ways that your machine needs to operate. If that's the case, give us a call and we can set up a schedule session with you and ask an expert or a consulting session. And we can go over your specific needs. Any questions on this or anything else, give us a call on the tech support line found on our website and stay tuned to the other videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.